Sometimes you just fall in love again. When I first saw you, everything felt so right. Blue cheese, I put you on everything that I ever eat. Blue cheese, it tastes so good to me. You treat me so right Anytime that I'm in Applebee's I said please bring me the cheese That's blue Blue cheese is true for you and me You will see that I like you on anything Fuck a beat, I go a cappella for some cheese that's blue for you and me. Send me a check, fucking craft. Blue cheese, whoever's out there. Don't send me a check, craft. You got that nasty ass blue cheese. Send me a check, big bobs. What is it, big bobs, blue cheese? That's what I'm trying to go after. Why am I fucking around with craft, fucking bullshit? Craft. Get that K out of your life. Isn't that how they spell that shit? Craft. Oh, we're being clever. No, you're not. You're being racist. That's a that's a racist beacon right there, throwing out a K in your craft. For what? For what? Was the other craft taken? You can't copyright that craft. You throw a K in it, you're trying to put up a beacon for hope. You want people to be like, well, if it's between this craft and that craft, you know what craft, craft I want, brother? You know who I voted for, brother. But if you're really looking for the best, the best blue cheese that you can get um, is, is uh, Big Bob's. Big Bob's, all right? No, Bob's Big Boy. Sorry, Big Bob's. Sorry, Big Bob, but it's Bob's Big Boy, okay? I will, I will drown something, okay? I will recreate uh, a, a local pool drowning, okay? You treat, I'll treat a fucking chicken wing as if it's a little kid and it's just you pouring that and it's like the rapids that's what it's like it's like a drowning at hurricane harbor that's what i'm doing with my fucking wings i'm not trying to have a balance ever all right i'm not trying to have a good amount of blue cheese on one buffalo wing all right i'm drowning it i want it to look like the abominable chicken wing when i'm done with it all right and i'm being honest with you i'm being vulnerable i'm opening up to you i'm peeling back the onion you know what i'm saying I like a lot of blue cheese. I'll put on weird shit too. Give me a pickle, throw some blue cheese on there. All right, listen, if blue cheese is available, I'm getting it. I don't want to meet the psychopath that has an option of blue cheese and just goes, nah, I'm good. Can't be my friend, pal. Can't sit here. That should be the first question on interviews. You sit someone down and be like, all right, so you're in a situation, you got a chicken wing and you have a burger. Which one are you going to use blue cheese on? <laughs> Trick question, friend. I'm putting it on both. Okay. And then if I somehow, you know, like that, that's the thing you put it. Listen, ranch is okay on pizza crust, everything like that. But always prefer blue cheese, right? Like what is ranch? I feel like ranch is uh, the adopted stepbrother, foster child of blue cheese. And that's no offense to to the... To, to the drifting children around the world, all right? That's no offense. It just, it is what it is. If you can get that homegrown blue cheese, get it. it comes from the earth. Ranch, it could come from Area 51 for all we know. I, I, can, I can count the dots backwards of where blue cheese comes from, but ranch, that's a whole nother mystery, friend, okay? Whole nother mystery. We're gonna do 30 minutes on blue cheese alone today, all right? Because you know what? I had blue cheese with my dinner last night, dipped my chicken drumsticks in it. Yeah, chicken drumsticks are just big chicken wings. I'm here for it, all right? Dipped my blue cheese in it, had it with my salad. Uh, what else did I have? What else did I have? What else, what else? I had some rice, put a little blue cheese on rice. I don't give a shit. It's fucking the duct tape of the flavor world. You put blue cheese on anything, all right? Shit, I might have a blue cheese snow cone. Gonna make someone throw up listening to this podcast. But I'm just, 
I'm just dynamic like that. Okay. And then went to a lunch today, blue cheese on my food. Okay. They had a spinach wrap for me and nice little salad, blue cheese crumbles. That's when you know it's real. When they got those blue cheese crumbles in a separate dressing or a separate little bowl from the dressing. They say, hey, friend, some people like blue cheese, but they don't want it to be overgrown with the actual cheese portion. So they give it to you dry. I'll take some blue cheese. I'll nibble on it dry like a little mouse in the corner. I'm just sitting there nibbling on blue cheese. I don't give a shit. Listen, you can't judge me. Listen, I'm at the I don't give a fuck stage of my life. No fucks to give, friend. No fucks to give. Because it's like I got my dog. I got my woman. I like taking care of myself. You know, I'm always going to stay in shape. I'm not saying I don't give a fuck like I'm just going to give up. But when it comes to perception or trying to be cool, I don't care, friend. I'll eat my blue cheese. I'll pack a snack of blue cheese in a duffel bag. And just eat dry blue cheese for dinner. I'm about to start taking rocks of blue cheese with me just in my pocket. Loose, crumbled blue cheese just ready to go at any time in my blue jeans. Wear blue jeans, friend, because I support blue cheese. All right? We need to get off this blue cheese shit unless I'm going to get a sponsor out of this. Going to get a sponsor out of it, friend. Drinking out of my fucking mason jars. I'm so fucking Midwestern now. If you're really wondering why I'm talking with like this Southern draw right now, I don't know where. Listen, I'll be honest. I know where it came from. Your boy's stepping up in the world. <clears throat> All right. Now, you know, we talk, we talk sometimes about business. I try to keep it all comedy here. But I feel like I could weave this in, like a little basket weaver. I could weave this into comedy. But I run a business, a business. It's been shut down in California for a while. Just work here, work there. I was relying on my merch business throughout the pandemic. Business was booming. A lot of stores closed. A lot of people went online, friend. Went online. Business did good. But I try to expand my video production business. You know, it's not all comedy. I realized that. I, they need to grow together because one day I, I always I love doing more than just stand up comedy. I can't ever see myself just being like I'm on the stage and that's it. I think and, and it all works together. Podcasting, that's something that, you know, people who are purists with comedy would have been against. They're like, why are you doing a podcast? You know, and even it's always been weird. And I always get in these. They're not debates, but I don't like the old school mentality. I see where it comes from of wanting to be a purist comedian, wanting to be, this is all I do. I get on stage. That's how I'm known. And that's what I do. I travel and I do that. Hey, that's great friend, you know, to each their own, if that's what you, all you want to do. But there was a part in the nineties and everything where everybody wanted sitcoms. People were doing stand up to get a sitcom show. That's where you made the money. And it was kind of the goal. So people, a lot of people, even if they were just like, that was just the business model. But then for some reason, when the internet came out, there's this huge layer of being like uh, against doing stuff online. Oh, he wants to be an actor. Oh, he just wants to be an influencer. He wants to do this. But it's like all the comedians, everybody has to get a podcast. You have to be able to adapt and be multifaceted. I'm attracted to stand-up comedy because for one, love being a silly goose. That doesn't even make sense, but it's the quickest sound, and I don't like this. That's too hacky. So was that. That's me on my OnlyFans. Enough. Enough diddle-daddle for you. Some of that. That's what I call that kind of comedy. When someone gets on stage and they do the hackiest joke or they do a street joke that I know they didn't write, I just go to like whatever comedian's next to me. And it's representing like that's a Bonk, wink, oh, <laughs> birds flying around the head style of comedy. I don't bucks with it. But anyway, what attracts me is you now have to be an entrepreneur to do comedy. I love being a silly goose and I love the business side of it. I love having to do more. I love setting everything up. And you got to like, it's a weird balance of figuring out, okay, how much stage time should I be doing? That's number one, writing jokes. There's even within that is how much should be on writing and how much should be on stage time, how much you're investing your energy because you're limited. And especially when you're not like a headliner and already have everything established, you have to pick where your energy goes because you also have to make money doing something else, um, which I'm very, it's all worked out well. 
in the sense of what I've decided to make a business uh, works seamlessly with what I'm trying to build as a career with stand up and everything like that. It's worked out nicely. But um, aside from that, business production. I got invited uh, here in Austin, you know, and that's one thing is like, I have to have my business working. I'm a grown ass man. I got bills. Got to have a real business. So you got to do a lot of networking and everything. And I'll be honest with you. I was living in an area before in Ventura, California. Love it. Love it. Beautiful place. Beautiful people. Um, some of the best people. Saw of the earth. Great people in Ventura, California. It's a magical place. But there is a level of business there that I don't understand. Okay. Your boy's a hustler in the sense of I'm ready, I'm ready to grind, baby. Okay. I like being motivated. I like working hard. I like making things happen, growing everything. And I ran into a blockade there in the sense of a lot of the businesses didn't make sense. And it's fine to each their own. It was a sleepy beach town that was in, in this is my 10 year prediction. Ventura is going to get eclipsed by Oxnard in the next 10 years because Oxnard is expanding so much and so much industrial building and uh, businesses are coming to it because they're willing to grow. They want to become a big commerce. Ventura has other plans. They want to keep it small town. They want to do this. They want to do that. They want to do business with their neighbor. And it's great. It's a beautiful thing, but it's hard to uh, exist in that world and uh, be profitable, especially from a young you know, a young business person, um, there's there's not a lot of room to flourish. And that's what me and my fiance kind of ran into is while we were living in a great place and had a, a dope view of the ocean, we were like, we're never going to be able to buy around here. We love the weather, the people, but it's like, we're not going to be able to afford anything on this street that we like. And this is kind of what we like of this area is the view and where we're at, but we can't afford this. There was like $1.2 million houses next to me that were like small houses that were like 1.2 million for like a three bedroom house that was built in 1940. And it's like, okay, yeah, that 1.2, do you know how much a mortgage is going to be on that? But because of that, we had to leave in the sense of like, well, let's go to where there's opportunity and growth and let's uh, try to be oil tycoons, you know? So we headed out West or the opposite of West. Anyway, keep up. I'll never explain my soundboard to you. Um, but one thing that I ran into in Ventura that uh, was weird for business is there wasn't a lot of young businesses. And not only that, there's not a lot of opportunity to make money there. So there's not a, a lot of profitability to where you can afford stuff. And the weird thing about Ventura to me that always was interesting was there was like vacuum repair shops on Main Street. We're talking about prime real estate to where if a business didn't want to move in, you would be paying like a $3,500 mortgage or I mean, sorry, a rent on your business front. I'm like, how many fucking people are getting their vacuums fixed? There was a doll dress shop repair. How many fucking people are playing with dresses to where they're ripping them enough to be like, yo, you know what this industry needs, this this city? A doll dress repair shop. Business is a booming. Yeah, we get about three orders a year. Like, how much are you charging to be able to sustain this business? Which brings me to my conspiracy is that behind these businesses in Ventura, it's either that they're so grandfathered in with how much money, uh, what they paid for when they owned that spot back in the 1800s, they're like, oh, I spend $2.75 a month on my mortgage. You know, maybe that's the case. Um, or it's all a front. It's all a front for the mob, the mafia, gangs, I don't know, the government, aliens, Russia, China. Take your pick. Pick your poison, friend. Uh, but none of it would make sense. And then when there would be like young people moving in the houses, like, uh, one friend who was moving into a house and uh, I remember talking to him and I was like, man, how, that's awesome. How'd you get that place? He's like, oh, my grandparents gave it to me. Oh, 
all right, well, that's a completely different world that I'm living in. That's like always the thing is when some people, and this is why I'm, I try to stay out of a lot of things when it starts talking about economical hierarchies and social hierarchies, where people came from. And people have the idea of like, hey, pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of mentality or the opposite when people are like, um, not the opposite of that, but when people are like, hey, look, I've, why, just get a job. Don't don't be a criminal. Get a job. Do the, look, and I'm like, dude, you don't even live in the real world. Whenever people start having certain opinions, and I'm like, hey, I know you're either a trust fund baby, or you were given this and given that. You're not playing the same game as the real world we're playing. It's all about what population of the what percentage of the population is playing this hustle that we're all in reality living in. You're over here playing with a fucking fake monopoly board. All right, your opinion don't count in the real world. Bars anyway ladies and gentlemen all of that said what were, what are we at i don't want to i don't want to run too too much about this fucking blue cheese took up too much time in the beginning but i'll never apologize for that okay i'll never apologize for my love for blue cheese but speaking about business uh as you know i moved into an area where business is a booming and one thing led to another and somehow your boy was vetted in a conversation and I was invited to a, uh, an event, a, uh, a club. I don't want to say the name because I don't even know what any of this is. Uh, but I'm in a cult now pretty much is what I'm getting at a business cult where, you know, I'm probably going to switch my business from being in uh, video production to probably I'm going to be an oil tycoon, you know, I'm going, uh, now that I'm in Texas, full Republican. And, uh, listen, ladies, if you're thinking about getting abortions, don't talk to me about it because I'm looking for money. Okay. And I'm looking to, char to churn people in. I'm just kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, let that be. Hi, this is Evan Lopez with Evan Lopez Industries. We do not support the views that Evan was just joking about. Possible sponsorships? Just know that was a joke. We believe in your body, your choice. All right? Now, we do not support the abortion ban. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from that quick uh, edit that we had to do live. Um, but I was I had the opportunity to be in these room, the room with these uh Apparently, and I'm glad I, le I learned this after, but a lot of them were uh, billionaires and shit and had some deep pockets, deep pockets and roots in Texas. And it's definitely uh, an interesting thing. It taught me a lot about uh, even just brief encounters about life and social development and just how much relationships play into success in things. And um, it was definitely eye-opening and it was interesting. I thought it was fun. I went to this beautiful place with a view of like a 360 degree view of uh, the entire downtown Austin area. You could see uh, Zilker, or, or I'm sorry, Lady Bird Lake. You could see all the giant uh, skyscrapers, buildings, the view of everything. It was insanity. Uh, apparently the secretary of defense was like in one of the other rooms um, or some there was like armed guards everywhere um it was just an insane opportunity and uh so basically if i stop doing the podcast and i just start talking about oil and you see me kind of disappear and have a, a ranch somewhere um don't say hi okay don't bring up anything from my past life because i'm now in the oil game and i'm trying to keep a low profile okay i want to just walk around places with a cowboy hat and uh, a belt buckle just live my life okay just be hush hush in the back paying for vaccines and everything i'm going completely the other direction in my life uh it's just that seems like a more fun life all right i just want to eat really good steak and just and just play that game okay i want i want to bump shoulders with governors and everything like that basically house of cards without all the scandals Okay, I just want to look at the camera and make weird eye contact um, and, and just be one of those people, an oil tycoon, a big wig, you know? Um, one thing that was beautiful about it is, and this is the big lesson that I took away from it, 
is I was talking to this one guy and I opened up because I had to speak and everything because I was like my first time at this thing. And uh, since I'm a comedian, I was like, I got to make some funny things. I have to be a standout and I have to say something. I literally uh, opened up with, I don't want you guys to hate me. And they're like, why do you work for the IRS? And I was like, ha ha ha. All right, Bob. And uh, dude, yeah, I don't even want to get into that. But anyway, uh, I told them, I was like, I am from California. But just know, and they were like, oh man. And then some people were like, well, now you're here now. And that's what matters. I was like, <laughs> I could have cried because you don't know what it feels like sometimes. I'm still driving around with California plates and the judgment that you get, just the anxiety that you're driving around with California plates. I have to drive twice as good as everybody else around me. That's how I feel because I'm sticking out because people are looking for any opportunity to judge my driving. If I'm going too slow, if I'm going too fast, if I'm not using my turn signals, if I'm fucking up anything, I can't just be like, oh, another person that, you know, messed up driving. No, I have to be perfect. It's stressful. Um, but to be welcomed, it, it was very welcoming. They were like, oh, that's all good. Welcome. Welcome to Texas. You know, dude, I love hearing that. And I can't wait till I'm here long enough to be allowed to wear a Lone Star star on my cowboy hat. And be able to welcome people to Texas. Because they welcome you like a weary traveler. That, you know, is here now. Um, seeking liberty. And that's what I said. I said, uh, not here to try to California, Texas. Matter of fact, I'd appreciate it if we could try to Texas, California a little bit. And then they were like, yeah. And then I was like, because I'll be honest, the barbecue out there. Subpar compared to here. And they started laughing. I was like, all right, I got them. I got him. I said, just moved here, seeking a life of liberty. All right. That's becoming a foreign thing in California. And they love that. Whew. Listen, you got to pay, you got to know your audience. That's a tip for anybody trying to, trying to make it in the business world. You got to know your audience and you got to know what they want to hear. Okay. You, you, you put your balls on the table. You too, ladies, you too, ladies, pansexual friends, whatever you are, put those pansexual balls right on the table and you got them like you can't listen you can't tuck them the last thing you want to do is be uh mild about it and just be like hey i'm from california but just so you know <laughs> i'm just here to enjoy now you gotta own that shit you gotta say hey listen i was born in the wrong place okay i'm just kidding uh kind of but the number one thing that i took from it and I enjoyed was there was a lot of older people, you know, some people were 70. I think there was one guy allegedly who was there, who was 90, who was, uh, somebody in the CIA or some shit like that. I'm going to get murked for even talking about this. Uh, but he wasn't there today, but anyway, but what I loved was there was an older gay man who, uh, complete liberal, Democrat, uh, and stood for a lot of those beliefs. And on the other side of the room, hardcore Republican who talked about the infrastructure bill and just it couldn't be more polar opposites. And at the end of it, while I was talking to one of them, the other one comes up and puts his hand on the other guy's shoulder and goes, I'll pray for you as a joke. And then they start laughing and they hugged and then they went about their day like they were friends and they held completely different political beliefs. And honestly, that was the most refreshing thing I've seen in a long time, a long time. And it was just like, ah, oh, that's the way it's supposed to be. Because, man, I, I have friends that don't really even talk to me anymore because I don't agree politically. You know, people who they make judgments because if you're not for this thing, then you're completely against it. And it's hard, you know, that, that's a sad thing. I didn't want to lose friends over this past year that believe certain things and want to support certain things and don't believe in anything else. But I feel like that's what has made America great. And I love, I'm sure someone's getting fucking triggered by me even saying the word make America great. Someone's like, oh, how could he? That's someone just taking pictures of this moment. I don't have to explain my soundboard. 
But I feel like that is what makes America the greatest country on the planet. I really do believe that. Listen, you can think that other places where they have smaller, dude, no other country is like us. No other country where we have such freedom. And that's why it's so important to protect it, to always run things through, through the filter of like, is this impeding on our rights and what we are as Americans and what we have all, you know, the constitution, what we believe this is what our value should be. Does it go against that at all? Are you impeding on those? Because those are the most important because that's what's laid the foundation for making everything possible. And if it's impeding on it, it's like, no, on principle, we can't because this is what separates us. This is what makes us the best country on the planet. This is why there is so much liberty and ability to be whatever you want to be in this country. The freedom of speech, that's a beautiful thing. And it's something we take for granted. It's something that is trying to be censored, something that uh, I think is the epitome of what an American should be. As someone, no matter how they feel, should have the right to say whatever they want to say. Um, and obviously there's restrictions when it comes to that, hate speech and violence, incitement, and everything like that. But across the board, I think it's so important to protect that and other rights as Americans. Obviously, your body, your choice, um, I think that's so important. Um, but what I loved about seeing older people who have completely, they couldn't be more different political views, at the end of the day, they realize we might not agree on this small facet. And, po and politics has been so, everything's been politicized to where it now feels like politics have taken over everything. So it's such an important thing, but it's such a small facet of what a relationship should be. There's, there's plenty of stuff that I probably don't agree with, with some of my best friends, but on these important principles and basics of being a human, I agree so much with, are you a good person? Do you care about other people? Do you not try to manipulate other people? Do you, in general, want people to do well? Do you want to be a helper? Are you, uh, you know, not controlling people? Are you, are you just a good person? Like, that's all I really care about. I don't care if you have a miseducation on what political beliefs you think that it should be. Usually, everything boils down. If you took all the politics out of it and went super broad with people's beliefs, I doubt there'd be much difference in what you think. Do you want other people to do good? I feel like everybody across the board would be like, yeah. But it's just the details and confusion and perception of what we think that means from that other person. Dude, when people think, I think Trump should be president, we automatically, our perception of what that means, we put it to our own experiences of what that means. We, we look at it of like, oh, so you support this. Oh, you support this. Oh, so you're a racist. Oh, you're this. When in reality, that person doesn't agree with any of that and their reasons for why they would vote for Trump or anybody, no matter what it, who it is, is because they have other important beliefs that are supported by that. Whether it's like, no, I believe in business. I believe in the free market. I believe that in reality, this, the numbers are showing, this is what is actually helping minorities. This is what I actually helping, uh, to use a liberal term for the liberal listeners, people of color, okay? And myself being a person of color, okay? Don't forget the last name, Lopez, okay? Listen, I don't know whoever, uh, how is white not considered a color? We're pretending it's not. Is it on the paint app? I remember it being on the paint app when I was a little kid. Sometimes the canvas was black, you know, and you could use white as a color. So don't try to tell me white isn't a color. So now white people aren't people of color. All right. There's some tan white folks out there. All right. You got to take like the shades to them. Be like, all right, you could be something. Um, but that's what, that's what I'm trying to get back to. I've tried to really back off political stuff on this podcast. I don't know if you've noticed in the last couple of days, uh, that I've really, I've really tried to change what I allow myself to be consumed from, especially in this podcast. I don't like getting political, really, 
because I have such a broad sense of what I believe. I'm not dialed into a team. It's like fucking football for some people. I'm just like, they're the fucking Jets and they're the fucking Jets to the end. And even the fucking Jets from fucking West Side Store, they're like, when you're a Jet, you're a Jet. That's how people are. They're like, when you're a Dem, you're a Dem. Um, I didn't need to make that second example. Not a lot of payoff. But um, yeah, man, that's the big thing is, man, just think about how many times you went over to a friend's dinner, you know, whether you went to Thanksgiving or some event where their grandparents were there and you're just like, oh, these are such sweet people. It was a great thing. No politics was ever t like brought up. You just thought, oh, wow, they're great grandparents. You know, you know, your friend has talked about, oh, my grandpa, I love him so much, blah, blah, blah. And you exchange time with them and everything. And you realize in the conversations and everything's about family. Everything is about food and cooking. And, oh, what do you want to do? And blah, blah, blah. And then you probably have had this experience and never realized that they probably have completely different views than you do. And then you don't really see that now. I feel like people are just not interacting as much. And maybe that could be what the, the big side effect of COVID was. That was a terrible thing is we lost interactions with people who we didn't uh, always sync up with our belief systems of politics because politics was just everything this past year. And we just get into these groups and these echo chambers that are dangerous because then you just keep hearing the same things over and over again. So you're like, yeah, this must be true. And you're sending the same shit to the same people of like, can you believe they're doing this? And it just becomes reality. When in, in reality, like politics, like what people believe politically, people can be so misinformed and they think they're doing the right thing. Doesn't mean they're a bad person. You can't be friends with them. It just means, I don't know. I just feel like everybody's got to get back on the same team again. At the end of the day, we're all American, friend. Okay. We're all American. We're just trying to become oil tycoons. All right, friend. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we were supposed to have guests on this week, but listen, things are hard to have guests on when you're not in an ideal uh, podcast studio. I, I don't know if I've told you guys this, but I've been filming this. I have a setup in my goddamn living room. I see the kitchen right here. I see my bedroom door right here, front door right here, patio door right here where wasp fucking harass me. I had a dream about wasp nests, okay, that they were just everywhere around me. It's fucking bully ass wasp over here. All right. Maybe we can California, Texas a little bit, you know, but not so much to where I don't become an oil tycoon anymore. All right. But it is what it is. But we're going to try to have guests on, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you don't watch it, go on YouTube, watch the podcast if you want to see my face, but just don't forget to subscribe, like it. It helps me tell your friends about it, friend. All right. Tell your friends about it. And remember that no matter what, I still love you, friend. Yeehaw.